Um, right, listen, let's talk Jordan Henderson. You know, it's all but all but done. His deal to uh, Al Etifak. Apparently, he went to uh, the actor and said his goodbyes. Uh, he did his medical in Manchester over the weekend. The fees all been agreed, so it's just a matter of time before it's all officially confirmed. Uh, I was asked by him. I was asked on a live show the other day about you know what what we think he'll do and will he put a statement out and what would that look like and obviously don't want to speculate too much on that until until we see it but the lingering question over Henderson that's going to remain is going to be about his legacy um, according to four hundred Premier League fans surveyed in the Skybet Fan Hope survey eighty one percent think Jordan Henderson will undermine his support for Rainbow Laces if he joins the Saudi League and sixty eight percent of Liverpool fans agree. Uh, there's a quote here. Her former Liverpool captain Graeme Souness told Skybet, uh, I think with him as an ally of the LGBTQ plus community um, and a supporter of Rainbow Laces uh, and he then ends up going to Saudi, I think without a doubt that will damage his legacy. Um, disgust and club. No, absolutely. Um, I made Graham Souness right on that, quite frankly. As we know, I spoke to Cop Out founder Paul and Am a couple of weeks ago in the studio there, um, and he said much the same thing. He'd been spoken to by lots of their community, lots of their members and subscribers, and they said exactly the same. So, for, unfortunately, for a lot of Liverpool fans, um, if it does end up going through, like it looks like it will, it will tarnish his legacy as a footballer, as a person, as an ally. Um, it, it's a it's a difficult one. It's a difficult conversation for us to have. Obviously, not being involved in in that sort of community, what have you. But it, it's so hard because to separate what he's done as a footballer and what he's done as a man is a really difficult thing. As a footballer, obviously, he's led the cap the club brilliantly. One of the best captains certainly in my lifetime. We've won everything with him as a leader, but. Um, when he said the things and he stood for the things he's done in the past, he's kind of put himself up there to be judged, and he will be judged differently because of this. Like I've heard lots of people say, "Well, Fowler's out there now, Gerard's gone out. They haven't had the same levels of scrutiny." Unfortunately, they didn't do the good stuff that Henderson's done. So by doing the good stuff, Henderson's put himself in a position whereby if you then make this decision, people are going to criticise you for it. You know, you got you rightly received the praise for your for your work and what you said and what you stood for. You're rightly going to receive the criticism for going essentially what many people will see is just completely undermining it and going back on it so I'm not surprised that the numbers you mentioned there and people like Graham Souness are saying he's going to tarnish his legacy because I think the the damage he does with this move for a lot of people not everyone would be irreparable I think I think his legacy as a Liverpool captain and a footballer isn't tarnished for some people it is maybe but I don't, in my opinion I, no, it do, I, I don't think it does because I, th- I, I can't separate it but it, it it absolutely has to has to have an impact because you can't stand for something and then go again. Well, you can stand for something and then go against it when the money's right. That is kind of that's the almost the definition of like immoral, you no know, lack of morals or immorality, whatever you want to call it. In that, I, I stood for it until there was more money on the table, and then I didn't stand for it anymore. Yeah. Like we've seen people throughout history stand for something and almost like put the lie. And I'm not saying that that's dramatic. I understand it, but like. You didn't have to go to Saudi Arabia. And I, there'll be a lot of people that I bet in the comment sections, in the chats, and I've seen it on... I saw uh, Keeva O'Neill tweet about it and she, her, her disappointment at it. And well, she thoughts. wrote a brilliant she did, It's amazing. And, and all the comments were, but he's been off for 700 grand a week. You'd do the same, you'd do the same. And that's all that it's coming down to is that... Yeah, what, what we're saying is his morals will have a cost. And if, you, if your morals have a price on them, then of course you're going to get criticised. Some people will agree, some people will disagree. And that's fine, you be you. But... The, the, the thing that I don't understand is people arguing the other way against people who are saying it, it tarnishes them because Paul and Kiva and uh, other people of of the that community are telling you, they're telling you how we feel. They're telling you the answer. They do feel let down. Yeah. It's hard for me as a straight, middle-aged white guy to feel much the oppression or much in terms of discrimination. I don't really get it. But the people who tell you they feel discriminated against are telling you. They are there. Te- no, no, Paul's the same and Kiva saying... Yeah. We feel let down, members of the cop house. We feel let down by this guy who was at the forefront of all these campaigns for them to go to a country where you know th- their lives wouldn't be allowed. To, they wouldn't be allowed to be them to be themselves. Yeah. There, of course, of course, it's going to be because and it should be. He deserves because says I will applaud Jordan Henderson, the footballer, and Jordan Henderson for what he did as Liverpool captain in terms of the everything he helped Liverpool do. But you can't escape the fact that questions are going to be asked about this because he put himself out there he did this and he chose to be an ally and he chose to be an ambassador and that was his choice because he's a good guy I get it but when money when the money's been put in front of him and that I think I can see why that um, 
is bringing criticism because I'm critical of him for doing the same. It's really tough, isn't it, Steve Plunkett? Because I, I, I feel a bit, re- I feel uncomfortable saying sentences like, "Well, if we put that to one side and just focus on the football stuff," because it, I don't know, it, it's just who we are as a fan base. I think, and certainly as a city, I think you know, emotion does come into it, and you know, and and and, and, and morals and all kinds of. It, we've always had a deeper connection to the to the players and the and the people at the, at the football club just how we be how we behave how how we think so i don't think you can un, really unplug it i feel i say i feel a bit i feel a bit dirty saying sorry uh, you know lgbt community i'm just going to totally put your you know your your your, mm. your your feelings on this to one side and just go well jordan Anderson won loads of trophies but at the same time it is the the case of that jordan Anderson is just a footballer he's not a he isn't a part of that community. He hasn't sold. He hasn't decided that he's not gay anymore because he's going to, you mm. know, to be, be that. He's been a great advocate. He's been a great ally. But it, it I don't know. I agree. I, I agree. In one hand, that it's, it's, it's. If you make a moral stance, you've made a moral stance. You do close doors for yourself. But at the same time, it must be. It must be bad when you've got all your pe- you've got peers you but Bobby Firmino you know and, and, and Fabinho both going to end up playing against Jordan Henderson this season and will suffer none of the the same level of scrutiny as Jordan Henderson yeah in years to come the the heat will come out of that situation and we'll go back to thinking of him more as a footballer you know that that's the way the world is the biggest justification for all of this is Jordan's self justification for the move and he can take those beliefs with him and try and be play a small part and catalyst for change. That's probably how he's justified it to himself. That's going to be hard, isn't it? Of course it is, of course it is. But you have to open the door to some change in your life at some point. Saudi Arabia are trying to recruit everybody and they'll take people from lots of different religious beliefs and lots of different ethical beliefs. And they may have to change the way they think to incorporate that if they're genuinely serious about becoming a, a, a world-class football league. That's a cultural change. I don't see that happening. But Jordan will take stick for this, and, and justifiably so. He will go over there and still be of the same mindset. He'll still believe that it's wrong. I, In his mind, he's agreed with himself that those two things can coexist. But as a, as a captain of Liverpool Football Club, he's, 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 he's right up there. He's one of the best captains the club's ever had. Yeah. Can, can, I, can, I, can I just say, can't though, argue with that. Dan makes a really good point, and it's a really good point why footballers are fucking robots now. Mm-hmm. Because... He, you're right. No, mm. not, none of this is getting mentioned by Ronaldo and Benzema and Fabinho yeah. and Firmino and, and Neves and Mbappe is going to go over there because they never st- stood for nothing. Yeah. Because they, and that this is why this is why I think when Henderson did in the first place, that's why I was so I don't know encouraged or like happy or whatever because he he, he took the plunge into it. And you are right, he is now getting criticism for it. And you're right, he'll be thinking, Fuck, should, should I just get my mouth shut because he probably did a lot of good. What Jordan Anderson said and did resonated with a lot of people. Well, that, uh, he, he made the legacy. People, how many people are talking about yeah, it? Yeah, you know, he, people are dragging up program notes from two years yeah, ago yeah. On, on you know around the Rainbow Laces campaign or yeah, whatever, yeah. and he's been he's been a, a big yeah, supporter. Yeah. And I understand. Dude. I get it, mate. And I get it. Like I say, it's a, and you might be right. Did he do more good in that period? And then he's he, he had a legacy to tarnish. Some other people don't leave a legacy to well, tarnish. Fabinho, could, Fabinho's they, making the same move, and we're not talking yeah, about yeah, that. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think, your I think yeah, this yeah. is my this is the hardest thing for me on this, and I, I guess this is probably in defence of Jordan Henderson. But I, I don't. I'm, I'm half thought this through. I'll, I'll say it, is that why it's so bad is that I mean, like, why is Jordan Henderson? Why is Jordan Henderson the face of this? Like, why is he the only one who's facing this criticism? Because of this? He's because made because <laughs> yeah. he's the only one who's spoken exactly. out about yeah. it. Yeah. But who's Jordan Henderson? Yeah. Like, what is that? That's, that's an indictment of football. Yeah. Like, why is... Of all these people who've gone, who've got far bigger platforms, who've got far more going from... This is just, like, you know, if if you if it's to be believed, Jordan Henderson is, by all accounts, by the last vast majority of people I see on the internet, is a very average footballer who's just been a bit, you know, who's gotten by and gotten by, you know being a workhorse for a, for a good football team under a good manager I disagree I think he's been better than that by the way but it, that's, I think that's where the hurt comes from because it's not even about Henderson 
it's about the fact that none of these other fuckers have stood up and, and, and said anything. Mm, and the point. only one who has has now been, has had his head turned. So it puts more scrutiny on Jordan yeah. Henderson, but it should turn more scrutiny on the, on the rest of football and the rest of the, the, rest of the league and, and society as a whole. Because, and again, it goes back to your point, it's actually, and it's, it's a, such a shame that Jordan Henderson's going to probably end up setting this cause back, but it shouldn't have been on Jordan Henderson in the first place. Him standing up shouldn't be an isolated incident. To take it back to a football analogy, we used to love Dirk Kout because he used to run all day. And it's mad when you look back on it under a Jürgen Klopp team to have a player stand out because he runs. It doesn't You don't stand out in Jürgen Klopp's team because everybody runs. Mm. But Dirk Kout, we adored him because that was his thing. That mm. was the cliche. All he, do, all he ever does for us is run. Oh, yeah, Jordan right. Henderson has been put on a pedestal. He should never have been put on a pedestal. He should have been one of many who were who were able to come out and stand up and, and talk about this. And that's why I do feel sorry for him to some extent. As sorry as you can feel for a man who's going to earn 350 grand a week tax-free for the next three years and is going to acquire more wealth in three years than any of us combined will ever do in our entire lives. But again, I feel I feel sad for the for the community because that's why you'll feel let down because you're looking around at all these other footballs, this sport that you adore, and you're looking and someone someone stuck their head above the parapet and it must be like, oh wow, great! Thank you so much for yeah. speaking up for what that's I it. believe in, for for yeah. being a voice for us, and then to have that taken away. That's I, I, I from my understanding is where the they. I, I feel that too. I do. Well. I get it, and I, I also think mate as well, like. I looked at Kiva's article and Kiva's tweet, um, the cop out stuff. I saw Mel Reddy spoke about it, didn't she? Um, on Sky Sports in the comments, it was like, stop telling people how they should fucking feel. Mm-hmm. They people are telling you that they feel let down. Don't tell them they can't, because that's not right. I'm not going to sit here and tell people how you don't tell people how to feel. They, they these people, and they're they're just two of many examples. The problem is, and is Paul crossing... represents a group, doesn't he? And, yeah. and, he's, and he said the same. They're telling you this is a. This is a kick for us. This 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 is the guy who, you know, we put a lot into and and almost like, you know, if he if he's if he can be turned, anyone can be turned kind of and it's also a point of what it's gonna do, it's gonna the criticism in a way is weird. It's gonna stop other people standing up because they're going, Oh bloody hell, see what happened when Jordan said something. Yeah. Marcus Rashford feeding kids got so much stick for it. Because just concentrate on your footy, mate. Don't you know do whatever, blah blah blah. Oh, oh, and then he signs a new contract the other day. Oh, well, you're gonna feed all the kids with that, Marcus. Gary Lineker stands up for stuff he believes in mm. and he gets criticized for it. This is why people keep the fucking mouths shut. Exactly. People people because as soon as you are and I get it, because we're criticized. Well, that's the, this is the it's, depressing it's, part yeah. of the whole thing, is that it's money. And you've you're yeah. not just fighting against like a religious ideology, because that's what it comes down to, and that's why you know, we're playing devil's advocates on this. If you if you're raised and you are have got a a blinkered religious view, and I think you know fundamentalists in any religion have, have got this is that you it's like you feel like it's actually part of the core of who you are it's not religion is a choice ultimately but a lot of people don't think that it is but you're then technically then this you know, this quite quite small community you're not just fighting against a, a, the religious views of a, of, a, of, a, of, a, of a people or population or a nation or whatever you find it's money as well and the money's going to win because that's how our society structures so that must feel so depressing as a point and again that's just it, you know it's, it's a it'll be a drop in the wider ocean but when you're a, a small community fighting for le- fighting for legitimacy fighting for acceptance in the world anyone who's on your side must feel like an absolute fucking huge win mm. to the point where let's be honest if Cristiano Ronaldo had stood up that would have been a much bigger win just in terms of global reach for the community but it wasn't. It was Jordan Henderson, a an absolutely fine English footballer, stood up for it, and then to have that to even to, to lose that to feel like you've lost that foothold is almost a bigger kick than anything else. Because then again, you're looking around and going, who else has stood up? Who else is going to stand up? Mm. No one of any big reputation is going to stand. Up. And that's why I thought Kevin O'Neill was was actually brave in doing it because you know she's a journalist that might limit her. Her ability to work in certain spheres, God knows, you know. I mean, Grant Wild got all kinds of stick, didn't he? Going to the World Cup and trying to wear mm-hmm. rainbow t shirts and all that and all that kind of stuff. It will limit, you know, these things will potentially limit your uh, options in a world where money dominates. And it's strange, uh, in a really, just because... ideology plus money is almost an unbreakable thing. And we are part of the problem, is by, by a little bit by having this conversation because we're criticizing them. Because he stood up for something, now he changed his mind on it. This and, and I'm saying there before, aren't I? 
this way players keep them off shut and we can size that yeah. so it's almost a, it's almost a win. Win. the yeah. only way he wasn't going to get no it's not it's not it isn't lose lose though because he didn't have to go that's, no, that's, that's, the, that's yeah. the ultimate of it 100%. he didn't have to go he's chose to go like, and I get it someone's put Matt and they'll be oh well you, what would you turn it down blah 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 well I'm not a millionaire Yeah. and exactly. I still think I would I might be wrong but I don't know but, but I, I get that's the that, that's, said it before yeah. Steve and it's not the same but we've I, I've had to turn down media opportunities over the years because mm. they have got because I've made a moral stance. I've said don't buy the don't buy the sun. I've stood behind you know behind the justice campaign and all those kind of things, and that closes media opportunities to you. And I'm fine. I'm absolutely fine with that. By the way, you know because fortunately as Liverpool, we're fortunate that we've got other opportunities that are presented to us. We follow, we follow the biggest club, one of the biggest clubs on the, on the planet, but that's. What goes with having morals means that you you don't get to to always do everything that you know that other people get to do. Mm-hmm. And look, it comes down to it. I don't I, ultimately as a footballer, it's a fabulous opportunity for Jordan Henderson to go in an absolute ton of money. I don't think he would have expected that offer to drop on his table. I, you know, when he, when he sat get going you know, doing his preseason preparations, I think he's thinking Liverpool, Liverpool, Liverpool. I don't think he thought for a second he was going to get a phone call saying, "Do you want to come and join the mega riches of the, of the Saudi league?" And there is something to just being wanted and being desired that will have will have you know. And fit. also, mate, he hasn't had a chance to have a say yet. Yes, we exactly. Have, we, we That's need, crucial. Yeah, and yeah. I think Steve's point's right. Maybe go. Maybe he. Maybe he is the man who is the brave enough to go and wear a rainbow lace on a side. Maybe he is. Maybe George. Maybe he's doing the opposite, and he goes and goes right. I'm going to be this agent to change. I, my doubt. I have very high doubts about that, mm. and whether he would be allowed to do it. But. What we're, we're sitting here as it stands, we're recording this. It might change, of course, whatever. But Jordan hasn't had to say yet. We just and I think I, I, I think I think it's fair to at some point we we'll, 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 we'll hear what he's got yeah. to say, and, we, and he definitely should be asked about it, and he will be. And whether that's in his official statement or it's down the line when the first journalist gets a, cam- a microphone in front of him, yeah. someone will ask him about it, and then when we hear what he's got to say, because at, at the moment. And we're, again, we're part of it, so I'm not blaming anyone per se. But like, there's a bit of a pile on. Yeah. It would be yeah because he hasn't left yet. He hasn't had a chance to say. I wonder if he, he might contact Kiva. He might contact Mel Reddy. He might contact the cop house. We don't know. Mm-hmm. And he's allowed to have his say. And this is the thing we he, he deserves. And he look, deserves ultimately, that, ultimately, Steve. That's fair. He's a he's a, a straight white male who doesn't contravene. The, the, you know what I mean? Yeah. The, yeah. He, and he he's, he is actually just entitled to go and work how he wants to work and do what he wants mm-hmm. to do yeah. but again it's there's no there's no rules against it there's nothing there's nothing stopping him from doing it it is just a sense of disappointment it won't affect most people's lives moving forward He'll, he's just another footballer who's been at the football club had success and moved on there's tons of Liverpool footballers who've caused the controversy and done things I mean for God's sake we've just read a quote from Graham Souness about the Tarnishing Legacy who literally went and did an interview with the Sun while he was a Liverpool manager and absolutely ruined his legacy with a ton of Liverpool supporters by the way I'm not sure what the what the percentage of Liverpool fans would think about him but you know that's there's, so there's, again there's an irony to all of this like he is without sin cast the first stone none of us are none of us are free of sin none of us have got have, have ever had perfect morals and not had them changed in the face of you know a variety of situations and whatever i see it before you know every time we make mention of anything involved in the middle east the first instant response is well what about nike what about standard charts and all this nobody's trying to absolve anything of, of, of blame but it's a one issue debate and just to, you know to kind of speak up for that that community and the, and the and the reputation. If you if you take a strong moral stance on something and then you you change that, then it will it will damage your it will damage your reputation and possibly your legacy in some in some extent. That's just a fact. I'd be interested to know people like say comments and stuff. What people what yeah. people, people themselves think? And, yeah. Because like and the, the, again, there's a survey there. Like I said, the Skyway survey. A lot. Was it almost three quarters of people think it will? Yeah. yeah. And and I, and I, if I was asked to vote in that survey, I would say yeah. I do it's think not going to take yeah. away my Jordan Henderson memories. It's not going to take and away. He's been, and he's been a good. We, we, he's we, been, been a been, brilliant footballer for Liverpool. He's been a good a guy. Brilliant. He's been a great guy. He's done brilliant work for a for a host of charities. You know, he's worked for Alder Hayes, worked for the NHS, yeah. in rallying the captains together during lockdown. He's He's been an inspirational figure for, for multiple communities, for multiple for multiple individuals, for groups of people, for a whole set of fan base across the world, across creeds, colours, religions, everything. He's been a brilliant captain for Liverpool, and I stand by that. I think he's been a brilliant footballer for Liverpool, and that will always that will always remain as well. And I think it's just it's a shame that we have to 
that someone who's worked so hard, I think, should even have anything. It's a bit, you know, again, a completely different circumstances, but if you could undo, like, Gerard slipping so that he just gets to be this magnificent footballer and only people only remember from the good times, these are completely different. I'm not tri- trying to trivialise it. It's a shame that you don't, people don't get to live as perfect, these perfect figures in our, in our, in our memories, but... You know, he's a person ultimately and he's entitled to make his decisions. If he's made that, you know, he's sat down. He won't have done that out of hand. You know, he'll he'll be well aware of why he's done it. I'm eager to see how he responds. Does he even respond to it? He can, and he doesn't have to, by the way. He doesn't have to respond to anything because, again, to the point, he is not a member of the community. He's just been a person who said some nice things about it ultimately. Um, Are we making a bit too much of it? I don't know. I just put put to Dan's point earlier on, you know, Cop out and people from that community are rightfully upset, and I think it's worth bringing to the table. Yeah. Anyway, look, you know, just to wrap up on the Henderson stuff, you can read all about the other findings of the 2023 Sky Bet Fan Hope Survey. Um, add your voice to the debate and share your season predictions on Sky Bet Fan Central. The link is in the description below. Um, if you go onto the website, I, I went over and did a couple of videos and stuff, so my face is on the Liverpool page on there, uh, trying to spread a little bit of hope and optimism ahead of the new season because, let's be honest, it was rubbish last year. Um, so fingers crossed that it does that it does improve. Um, but yeah, look, I think that kind of draws a little bit of a, a line under it. Please do have your say on it. You're entitled to your opinion on it. A- absolutely we tread into dangerous waters when we start to talk about what the fundamental building blocks of people. Um, I know, and it does feel like we have, you know, we seem to have a, a greater percentage of these conversations as Liverpool fans over the years. But again, morals are very much at the centre. Morals and politics are very much at the centre of discussions of being Liverpool fans, being Scousers as well. So, yeah.